my name is Alberto Molina, and I'm here to explain you why we are still using OpenStack in 2024. I have been using different open source software uh, technologies the last 25 years, and I started using uh, OpenStack in 2012. Now I'm working for Fairbanks, a Dutch company that is helping others succeed when managing the infrastructure. And we are not only using OpenStack, of course, we are also experts in using other related technologies such as Kubernetes, Ceph, or any other open source software that help us in this field. So let's answer the main question. So why we are still using OpenStack in 2024? The main reason is clear is because we think that is the best option when you need to run VMs at scale. Obviously, if you need to run only a couple of VMs, there are more simple options and you can run them in your laptop. But if you need to manage uh, hundreds, thousands or, or VM, and then OpenStack is the best option. It's not only uh, a software that manages virtual machines. It's a full feature-rich cloud platform. Uh, OpenStack is not only virtualizing the machines, but also it provides a full virtualization for the storage and for the networks. Also, OpenStack is able to provide high performance solutions that are really useful in many cases. And all this feature rich solution is provided with an open source license. And nowadays, it's very important when we are talking about open source software, not only about the license, because we know some software that suddenly change the license, but it's also very important in this case that not only the license is open, but also the design and the way that is created and managed is completely open because behind OpenStack, there's a foundation. It's a big foundation with many different members. It was the OpenStack Foundation and they changed to Open Infra Foundation. Now there are other open source software uh, in the umbrella of this foundation. And with these uh, features, we can say that when we are using OpenStack, we have no the problems with vendor locking or the possibilities of this software to change suddenly the license or something like that, to change the, the requirements to use it. So also maybe to, to, to explain about the, the features, something that we also consider very important for OpenStack is that OpenStack is extensible and adaptable. So it's not just a piece of software that you need to run like it was designed. So you can modify and adapt to your specific. After explaining you why we consider OpenStack the best option for running VMs, I also think that it's honest to talk about why not everyone in, in this field is thinking that OpenStack is the best software because there is some people thinking that OpenStack is extremely complex and is not an option for them. I think that is mainly related with some unsuccessful story that happened in the past. When this open source project started, there was a lot of expectations. Many organizations tried to use it, but they probably didn't have the time or the people with the skills. And it was difficult to hire people because this um, situation with many organizations at the same moment and uh, trying to, to deploy and using OpenStack. And then finally, that led to some unsuccessful stories. So for this kind of software, infra software, to be in the top of this uh, famous Garner hype cycle is not good. So it's better to wait to this software to reach the plateau of productivity. And it's what we are going to explain in the next. 
Okay, we have been explaining why we consider that OpenStack is the best option if you need to run VMs at scale. But also, we mentioned some problems for some organizations in the past. Not for us, but for me, I have been always really enjoying OpenStack and also I have learned a lot about many different technologies, but I can understand if you don't have the skills to go deeper, or maybe if you don't have the time, then it could be, it was, it was um, not easy to manage that. But also we want to mention that the situation with the project has changed. So if you had those problems in the past, it was probably because the open source project was not mature enough. But with the time, obviously, those software in during the development, they improve. And now the situation is better. It's obviously better. But why is not everyone talking about OpenStack now? I think the main reason is because uh, the infra software is not really exciting. So it's something that we are just a bunch of people managing this kind of software and, and we, it's not like a, a JavaScript library or something like that. But now also is because the project is stable, is mature. The development is not as um, dramatic as it was in the past. And also the, the project has uh, changed focusing mainly in the infra components because um, some years ago, many of those components and the additional components for OpenStack, they didn't find this uh, maturity. And then finally, now the, the foundation or the people behind the project is mainly focused on the basic core components of OpenStack. And I think it's, it's a very good idea. Now we have a regular release cycle that is something really good for us. Uh, we have two releases per year. Also, we have mature deployment tools that help us to the deployment of OpenStack, but also during the upgrades, the procedure is clear, is test, and then we have a situation that when we are working in, in this field, we really love. So it's this situation that some people can consider is boring, but you have all the software, the option, the releases ready to be used. We have, if we talk about the cycle, uh, the, the Garner cycle, we are now in the plateau of productivity. And we also want to mention this because I think that some people is confused about this software because some people is thinking that why you are still using OpenStack when you can use Kubernetes. So they are talking about what is better, OpenStack or Kubernetes. And I think this is the wrong question because they are different software providing different functionalities. So the main difference is it depends on what you need to run. So if you need to run mainly containers and your applications are cloud native applications, obviously then the software that you need to use to manage this is Kubernetes. But if you need to run VMs, you can run VMs with Kubernetes, but if you need to run VMs at scale, then obviously OpenStack is, should be your choice. But also it's something that uh, uh, I want to mention, it's possible to use both. So, because for many organizations at this moment, the situation is that they have workloads running inside containers, but also at the same time, other workloads running in VMs. So you can combine them. You can use OpenStack creating VMs and then creating the Kubernetes clusters on those VMs, but you can even uh, work OpenStack on Kubernetes 
So the OpenStack software configured inside containers running, as you can see in the output that we are sharing is, is just uh, a development uh, deployment that we I have been working today. And then I, I added to the, this slide. So it's just this, though some Horizon and Kison are some of the components of, of OpenStack. And then you have this situation. So you can work with Kubernetes, you can work with OpenStack, but you can also combine them. I think it's also good to know who is using OpenStack. And then to have an idea about the, the size of the, of the OpenStack clusters and how the people is using this software, I think the main source of knowledge is obviously the analytics that the Open Infra Foundation is providing every year. These analytics are based on the survey that the Open Infra share with the community every year. I have been participating in, in many of them. And then you can see very interesting data about the size of the open cloud software, the companies that they are using and so on. Now, uh, also at Fairbanks, we can see that in the last month, there, there is, oh, we are, we can see a new wave of user or organization that are asking us about OpenStack that is mainly related to the people that is stopping using VMware. Okay, then for finishing this video, I think that it's clear that for us, the main reason to still using OpenStack in 2024 is that many organizations still need to use VM at scale, and then this is the best option. So we are sure that we will continue using OpenStack next year in 2025, and feel free to reach us if you have any questions.